Chapter 10, Developing New Products and Services. In this section of Chapter 10, we are going to focus on two learning objectives. The first learning objective is to recognize the various terms that pertain to products and services. And objective number two is to identify the ways in which consumer and business products can be classified. As we begin to take a look at um, developing new products and services, one of the most innovative and forward-thinking individuals is Steve Jobs, who has created the powerhouse company Apple. Um, Apple, because of uh, the products they have developed, has actually been called a new product innovation machine. So if we really take a look at Apple, um, for the past several years, Apple has been rated one of the most innovative firms globally. In its 30 plus year history, Apple has created several revolutionary products and services. For example, in 1977, the Apple II was created, which is the first commercial personal computer. In 1984, the Macintosh was created, which was the first personal computer with a mouse and a graphical user interface. In 2001 came the iPod, which was the first commercially successful MP3 digital music player. In 2007 came the iPhone, which is the world's best multi-touch mobile phone and media player. In 2008 came the MacBook Air, the extremely thin laptop that uses a solid-state drive instead of a hard disk. And then in 2010 was the iPad which is the thin tablet-shaped device with a color 10-inch screen that enables users to read books, newspapers, and magazines and access any array of apps, such as video games. Um, Steve Jobs' innovations revolutionized six industries. So the product that products he developed revolutionized six industries. Personal computers, animated movies, music, phones, tablet computing, and digital publishing. Well, once all these things were done, what was the next step? Well, of course, it was the iCloud. Um, which is, you know, we've really started to institute over the past couple of years as part of the digital lifestyle. So because many consumers now use multiple devices like smartphones, PCs, and tablets, all of them need a way to share music, photos, videos, files, and apps that reside on any one device. iCloud stores all the content and wirelessly pushes any changes or purchases from one device to the other. So I have an iPhone, an iPad, and a MacBook Pro. If I update music on my iPad, it automatically updates my iPhone and my MacBook. If I update my calendar on my MacBook, it automatically updates my iPad and my iPhone, all because of the iCloud. So consumers no longer have to sync devices to transfer data. It all happens automatically. Um, so as the timeline of Apple shows, uh, the timeline of Apple's innovation shows, the life of an organization depends on how it conceives, produces, and markets new products which is the topic of this chapter. So now we're going to spend a little bit of time taking a look at new products. As we've discussed all throughout this course, the essence of marketing is to develop offerings that meet consumer needs. In order to develop these offerings that meet the consumer needs, companies create these things called products. A product is a good service or idea consisting of a bundle of tangible and intangible attributes that satisfy consumers' needs, and the product is received in exchange for money or something else of value. So when we say product, product can be used to mean a good, a service, or idea. So let's take a look at those three concepts um, to describe them further. So a good is something that has tangible attributes that a consumer's five senses can, per five senses can perceive. So a good is something you can touch, you can smell, um, you can feel, you can hear, all these different things. Um, a good may have tangible attributes consisting of its delivery or warranties and more abstract concepts such as becoming healthier or wealthier. Um, goods can be divided into non-durable goods and durable goods. A non-durable good is an item consumed in one or a few uses and relies heavily on consumer advertising. So examples of non-durable goods would be Wrigley's gum, fuel, a candy bar, paper towels, okay, they're items that are consumed in one or few uses, okay. Companies rely heavily on consumer advertising to, um, to sell non-durable goods. A durable good is one that usually lasts over many uses, and the emphasis here is personal selling. Um, examples here could be appliances, cars, and stereo equipment because they last a long time. So if you look at the difference between the two, Okay, appliances, cars, and stereo equipment, they are pers they're, they use personal selling. You go to a car dealership, they are personally selling you a vehicle. You're buying a pack of gum, you're buying fuel, you're buying a candy bar, which are durable goods, 
they're using advertising to draw you in. So that's, those are the classifications of goods. Services, on the other hand, are intangible activities or benefits that an organization provides to satisfy consumers' needs in exchange for money or something else of value. Services are tasks that are performed for a consumer. So things like a car wash, dry cleaner, um, you go to the barber or the hair salon. Okay, those are all services that someone is providing for you. Um, services have become a significant part of the United States economy and exceed 40% of the gross domestic product. So all the products that are sold over the course of the year, any revenue and sales that are generated, 40% of that is coming from the service industry. Um, in addition to goods and services, we have ideas. Um, ideas are thoughts that lead to a product or action, like a concept for a new invention or getting people to vote. Um, individuals that use ideas as their selling point, people like politicians, um, charities, different things like that, focus on um, the idea uh, as, as what they, the product that they're selling. So it's important to note that throughout the textbook, as we've been talking about you know, products and what companies sell and what they advertise in the marketing mix, product generally includes the physical goods, but also the services and ideas as well. So you could be talking about dry cleaning and refer to that as a product. You could think about, um, you know, a, a charity trying to solicit donations as a product, and then obviously your physical good will be considered a product as well. So now that you know what a product is, um, it's important to realize that there are two broad categories of products that are widely used in marketing that relate specifically to the type of user. Okay, there's consumer products, which are products that are purchased by the ultimate consumer. So that would be you or myself. And then there's business products. Business products are products that are sold to organizations. Okay, so the businesses purchase the business products, and those products assist in providing other products for resale. Um, these can also be called B2B or business to business products or industrial products. Um, there are some products that are both consumer and business items, like an Apple iMac. Okay, so as a consumer product, the iMac would be sold through retail stores or directly from their website to someone like you or myself. As a business product, an Apple salesperson might contact a firm's purchasing department directly and offer discounts for multiple purchases. Um, the computers that you use in school, the Dell computers in our classroom or the, or the Macs that are in um, the computer lab, you know, those can be sold to individual consumers as a consumer product or they can be sold to a business like the North Colony School District as a business product. So the basis for determining whether a product is consumer or business is who the purchaser of that product is going to be. So for our purposes here, we're going to focus specifically on consumer products. Okay, So we're looking at the um, products that are purchased by the ultimate consumer. So consumer products differ in terms of the effort the consumer spends on the decision, the attributes used in the per purchase decision, and the frequency of the purchase. So there are four different types of consumer products. The first one you see listed on the screen are convenience products. Okay, these are items that the consumer purchase frequently, conveniently, and with a minimum and with a minimum of shopping effort. So you know this could be something like a candy bar or a soda or paper towels or things like that. They're convenience products. They don't put a lot of time and energy and effort into purchasing them. Another type of consumer product is a shopping product. These are items for which the consumer compares several alternatives on criteria such as price, quality, or style. So shopping products could be something like a computer. Okay, you look for quality, you look for price, you look for features and functions, um, you look for style. Uh, an automobile would be a shopping product. Okay, a cell phone or a tablet would be a shopping product. A camera, all those different types of things. Um, could be considered shopping products. The third type is a specialty product, and this would be an item that a consumer makes a special effort to search out and buy. Um, an example of this could be like limited edition Air Jordan sneakers. Okay, this my brother does this specialty products. He finds the shoe he wants, and then he seeks out where he can go to buy it because a lot of times they're not um, just available for general purchase in the store. So anything that you uh, look to purchase specifically. Okay, that 
you make a special effort to search and buy would be considered a specialty product. And then last but not least are products called unsought products. These are items that the consumer does not know about or does know about but doesn't initially want. Okay, so these could be products that you have no knowledge of or it could be a product that you know about but you, you're not going to seek it out. You don't want it. So it's something that's unsought. You don't, you're not worried about it. You don't care about it. Um, each type of consumer product stresses different marketing mix actions, degrees of brand loyalty, and also um, shopping effort. Um, how a consumer product is classified depends on the individual. So one person may view a camera as a shopping product and visit several stores before deciding on a brand. Another may view a camera as a specialty product and will make special effort to buy only a Nikon. So it really depends on the consumer how that product, how that consumer product is classified. If you would take a few minutes now on this screen, you'll see figure 10-1, which focuses on how a consumer product is classified, um, how it affects which products consumers buy and the marketing strategies used. I would like you to please pause the video at this point and just take a couple minutes and read over the chart. You'll see on the top, it gives you the type of consumer product, whether it's convenience, shopping, specialty, or if it's an unsought product. And then on the left-hand side is the basis of comparison. Okay, they look at the product. Um, the pricing decisions, place, promotion, brand loyalty of consumers, and purchase behavior of the consumers. Because remember, the type of consumer product it is, is going to depend on the individual and how they view their purchasing process. As you all know, uh, most organizations offer a range of products and services to consumers. What you may not know is that these range of products and services all have specific um, uh, terms or classifications. So here we're going to take a look at three different ones, the product item, the product line, and the product mix. Okay, a product item is a specific product that has a unique brand, size, or price. So a product item example could be, you know, ultra downy softener for clothes comes in several different sizes. So that would be a product item. Or you go online to the BMW website and you specifically order a particular BMW, that would be a product item. Okay, so it's a specific product, has a unique brand, size, or price. Um, and, it, and if you think about the Downey example, each size is a separate stock keeping, unit, stock keeping unit. So you guys might know when you go to the store, you purchase, you, or if you do any of the self checkouts like at Price Chopper or Walmart or, or Target or any of those things, and you scan your own. Um, you scan your own items to check out, you have to scan the barcode. Well, that's called a SKU code, okay, a stock keeping unit, and that basically identifies the product item. Okay, so if you go into if you go into a store and you buy a two liter bottle bottle of Pepsi, that has a SKU number. If you buy a six pack of Pepsi, that has a SKU number. If you buy a 12 pack of cans, it has a SKU number. Those are all specific items, and the SKU number identifies the specific individual item. Um, in addition to that, you have this thing called a product line. Okay, A product line is a group of products or service items that are closely related because they satisfy a class of needs, they are used together, they are sold to the same customers, they're distributed through the same outlets, and they fall within a given price range. So if we stick with the Pepsi example, a product line would be soda. Okay, Pepsi, Diet Pepsi, Pepsi Zero. Um, cherry Pepsi, all those different things, those are all part of a product line. So that's one example. Another example of product lines could be with Apple. They have the iPod, that's a line. The iPad is a line. The iPhone is a line. The iTouch is a line. The MacBook is a line. Okay, so they're groups of products that are closely related. Okay, um, another example could be a hospital, like Albany Medical Center. Their service lines consist of inpatient hospital care and outpatient physician services. Okay, so that gives you some ideas of what a product line is. A broad product line enables both consumers and retailers to simplify their buying decisions, um, and it also enables a firm to obtain distribution, avoiding the need for retailers to deal with many different suppliers. So they typically will send a whole product line to one retailer. Pepsi sends their whole product line to Target, to Walmart, to Price Chopper. And last but not least is this thing called a product mix. And your product mix consists of all the product lines offered by an organization. So Apple's product lines are the iPad, the iPod, the iTouch, the iPhone, the MacBook Pro. Um, those are all product lines. Their product mix is all of those items together. It's the mix of products that they offer 
to uh, the end consumer. At this time, we have completed Chapter 10 Learning Objectives 1 and 2. At this time